once, I do it again. Add it up, add it up, bankroll, bankroll, euro, euro, peso, peso, add it up. Inflation will come back for a, a number of reasons. It's always a number of reasons, not just one. First of all, the amount of stimulus being injected into the U.S. economy is on the order of nearly 75 percent of GDP since the beginning of last year. Mr. Biden is injecting another 10 to 15 percent into this economy. The second thing that will generate inflation is the reversal of globalization. And that is reversing because countries are returning to a nationalistic and a national based economic that will lower efficiency, lower productivity and raise prices. And frankly, I could go on, but those two factors alone, coupled with right. big government and centrally financed by central mm. banks, those sort of things are almost sure to produce inflation rates. Hey guys, so today I want to touch on a couple of things. I think inflation is on everyone's mind today. And whether you're normally investing into gold or silver, maybe you're into cryptos to kind of hedge against inflation, I think today is kind of an, an important day to go back over this sort of stuff. You know, just kind of keep talking about it. You know, we can talk about how inflation's always here, but unless you have the numbers, no one really cares. Well, today, the CPI data was released. We kind of have a better idea of what's going on. And it's it's not just he says, she says anymore, right? We've got more data. And consumer prices have jumped 5% in May. This is the fastest pace since the summer of 2008. So, you know, th what I noticed this morning, I, I tend to actually watch a lot of different financial channels on YouTube. I go through different channels on the mainstream media, and I do a lot of reading. So it's almost 11 a.m. here. I've, I've kind of got some stuff together. And what's really concerning to me is people don't seem to take this seriously. And, you know, more more than mainstream media, it's kind of like watching some of those larger channels on YouTube that some of you guys might not be very familiar with, and I don't want to call anyone out here, but this is a big deal, all right? For normal, everyday Americans, inflation even going up just a tad bit month over month, this is a big deal. It does hurt you. You notice when you're doing your shopping, when you need to buy the kids a new pair of shoes, you know, these sorts of things, they come into play and we can feel it. Now, if your net worth is... <laughs> you know, over a million dollars and, and you're just raking in insane amounts of money every month. No, maybe maybe this inflation doesn't bother you too much. But for the rest of us, we feel it. So consumer prices rose 5% year over year in May, the fastest pace, again, I have to say, since August of 2008. And it was higher than Wall Street uh, expected. So that's kind of not good either, which is interesting because let me go look one more time, but I'm pretty sure that the Dow, the NASDAQ, S&P, they're all still up. Um, so no one actually seems to be concerned with this. You've got a 3.8% rise in the core inflation rate. So this core inflation rate actually ex excludes food and energy prices, but it was the sharpest increase in nearly three decades. Uh, we've still got used car prices going up. This is insane. I mean, it's just insane. If, if you need let me just say this. If you absolutely need a different car right now, I would literally just go find the, the beat up, old, terrible, whatever just gets you to point A to point B. I don't think that I would be wanting to get a used or new car right now. Um, not even not even if you're getting a good interest rate. All right. I know that you can get a very good interest rate right now if if your credit is nice, you can get something pretty decent. But I just don't think that it's worth it for the cost out there right now. Even I myself, you know, I I need to go and get a new truck, but it is just not the time to do this. And it kind of puts me in this weird position because what if we continue to see this stupid inflation for the next couple of years? I guess it's possible, but I just, I've got to give it some time and, and you know, step back and kind of think about what my next move is going to be. So just to just to reiterate this and, and get it through our heads again, the CPI gain, it's, this is just crazy. It represented the biggest CPI gain since the 5.3% increase in August of 2008, just before the financial crisis sent the U.S. spiraling into the worst recession since the Great Depression. Now, this is from CNBC. 
Uh, the headline here is consumer prices jump 5% in May, fastest pace since the summer of 2008. And I actually just pulled this up before uh, the other two articles that I wanted to get into today. So two things could trigger the next financial crisis, says veteran strategist David Rausch. Is it Rausch or Roche? I'm probably going to say his name wrong through this entire video, but just hang with me because he actually highlights on some things that have been probably some of our concerns. So I would have to agree with this. He says that stocks are nearing the end of a bull run and the next major market meltdown may not be so far away. Now, this is coming from top investment strategist. Uh, he predicted apparently the 1997 Asian financial crisis, but what more of us would know is the 2008 global financial crisis. So I'm actually going to hold some, you know, I feel like his words could actually hold some weight here if you were one of the few people to actually see 2008 coming. You know, for so many people, they were like, oh, it just hit us by surprise. No, no, I was probably too young to be looking into all of this kind of stuff, but I would say that there were plenty of red flags there. And the general public and the media just decided to put their blinders on and didn't care to see this. So he goes on to say the more likely event that would trigger a bear market is rising inflation, which we have. Um, and if this continues month over month, guys, it just needs to be small increments month over month. And you are really going to start feeling it. We know that the middle class is shrinking. It has been. And if inflation just keeps ticking up, you're going to see the middle class begin to shrink more. We are in uncharted territory right now. But he says that the bear market would likely come from rising inflation that forces central banks to raise interest rates by more than expected. I'm waiting to see this. You know, there's some talk coming out from the Fed, some talk coming out from certain central banks. They don't really want to scare the people just yet, but we, I think that we know that raising rates, it's, it's going to happen. He says central banks are behind the curve. I would probably agree with that. And the sense that inflation is going to come back, the larger economies are being overstimulated and central banks are going to go on printing money and giving it to governments basically for free. Finally, somebody who actually understands. I mean, well, how can you dis how can you disagree with this? It is amazing to me that some people are just so blinded by this. I get it. Easy money, great for stocks, great for stock. I I get it. I get it. We can keep pounding the drums on that, but eventually this overstimulated economy that's going to be a problem. It is. You can't avoid it. All right. Now I know. Hey. Don't leave yet. I know that there's Bitcoin in the headline. Just stick around, guys. I'm sorry, but every time that gold is being talked about now, Bitcoin is also going to come up. I can't help. I can't control the narrative. OK, I can't help it. I'm sorry. So Bitcoin or gold? Top strategist David Rausch again explains his play for hedging against inflation. Again, I just got to say we know inflation is here. All right. We need to think about how we're going to play this out. The first thing I've highlighted here just kind of made me laugh. Um, both of these articles are from CNBC Pro. Uh, the, the links are in the description below, but wow. <laughs> listen, listen to what they have to say. This is, this is, come on. It says, while gold is often touted as a way to hedge against inflation, history suggests otherwise. What? Okay, wait, what history, what history are they looking at? Goes on to say, with the precious metal actually yielding a negative return for investors during some of the highest recent inflationary periods in the U.S. If they could just give me their description of what the highest recent inflationary periods were, I would love to see that. I can agree that right now at this very moment, Gold and silver are not performing how I would have expected them to, or probably how some of you would have expected them to. How many times are we going to reach $28 and boom, the hammer comes back down on silver? How many times can we reach, what is it, $1,900 for gold right now? They really, really don't want that to be there. Um, actually, just go and look at, a, if any of you guys follow Craig Hemke, or if you do have Twitter, TF Metals Report. Again, I'll say that that's at TF Metals Report. I got some pretty good data from there the other day. So he tweeted out something about gold and COMEX contracts, right? And I was able to go and look at the picture. He had a screenshot of it. And 
it looks like at exactly 8 a.m. on Tuesday of this week, 8,000 Comex gold contracts were sold. Like, at the exact same time, it was in a really, really short amount of time. You know, this is not us. This is not normal, everyday retail investors. It's not the little guy dumping this gold. It's big banks. It's bullion banks. It's it's somebody huge, right? So 8,000 COMEX gold contracts being sold in that short amount of time. That's just insane. And maybe to you that doesn't sound like very much, but that's the digital equivalent of 25 metric tons. I'll say that again. That's the equivalent of 25 metric tons. That's a lot of gold being dumped. Now, my theory on this is... They don't want gold to go over 1900 Okay, I can get that. But what about Basel III that's coming up? Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's coming up pretty soon. Actually, at the end of this month is when that starts. Is it that they don't want gold to get too hot right now and we're just going to keep manipulating that price? Like, I get it, your silver's manipulated out the wazoo, but gold's, gold is manipulated too, guys. Don't, don't sleep on that. It is manipulated. Do they just not want the price to get too hot? Or are they selling those paper contracts because the bullion banks can no longer hold paper contracts? When Basel III comes in, you have to own that gold. Like, own that gold. It's got to be stored. It's got to be physical. And it's it's got to be yours. Right? No more paper gold during Basel III. Again, let me just touch back on this article here. It says, more recently, some investors have suggested that Bitcoin, as an alternative store of value for investors, arguing its scarcity makes it a strong candidate for a kind of digital gold. Now, trust me, guys, I'm cool with crypto. I'm cool if you want to be in crypto, but I would never, ever, ever call it a digital gold. Do I believe that it's going to be a high value asset in the future in the next five to 10 years? Is it going to be a high value asset? Yes. Yes, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say no to that. But I will never ever call it a digital gold. That, that's just a way to piss on gold. That's, no, nope, I'm not cool with that. And honestly, when was it? 2018 or 2019? When the market took a hard hit, I'm not looking at any graphs right now. I'm kind of just trying to go off the top of my head and I probably haven't had enough coffee to even be discussing this. But when we've seen big market meltdowns, which this isn't even the meltdown that I expect, the next real meltdown that we see, you had better be ready for Great Depression era stuff. Okay, I'm going to watch my language here, but get ready for Great Depression 2.0. That's how ready you need to be. During these huge market sell-offs, Bitcoin does not perform very well. It does, but what does perform well during this time? Gold. Gold performs relatively pretty well. Even with the manipulation that we see, I think that it's still a safer bet than Bitcoin during that period. Now, Bitcoin's got some time, right? Like, I'll give it a couple years and see if it starts to act differently. And, you know, I'm, I'm okay with being invested in crypto. I hold a super tiny portion of my portfolio. It's, it's in crypto. Very small portion. If the prices go much lower, um, I'll pick up some more. But I, the argument for digital gold is just laughable. So on Wednesday, Roush said that a combination of Bitcoin and gold would be the best way to hedge against a possible debasement of the dollar and other sovereign currencies. In terms of weighting, Roush recommended allocating 2-3% to of your portfolio in crypto and 7% to gold. Now, I can agree with the 2-3% to of your portfolio being in crypto. I think that that's a, a nice, comfortable level if that's something that you like. But the 7% and gold. Now, how I would judge this, honestly, is, you know, we actually just did the Kevin O'Leary video and how much gold he holds, right? Now, he holds 5% in gold, so 2.5% is in GLD, and 2.5% was in physical gold. He pays for storage. He's He's got it in the vault, right? Um, 7%... I would say that if you are in the middle class or below that bracket, I think that maybe a little bit more 
of your portfolio should be in precious metals. Now diversified, right? Not just gold, um, but definitely some silver in there. Definitely some silver. My, I actually hold way more silver than I do gold. Um, I've been pretty public lately on how I would like to add a little bit more gold to my positions. I'm I'm not too fond of of 7%. Now again, you know, you don't want to make everything so cookie cutter and this all depends on how much debt that you have. Are you looking in a time of crisis to make some some big financial moves and maybe doing some investing during that period? Um this is all kind of how this depends. Or are you just trying to ride it out, right? Just make sure that you can pay, you know, your property tax and hold on to some of your assets. This is tough for me. You know, depending on your position, how much income you have coming in and everything that I just stated, I think that 10 to 30% of your portfolio should be in precious metals. Maybe even, maybe even more than that if you're comfortable with it, because I'm, I'm extremely bullish, but I'm just giving you like the, you know, how normal people would probably invest. 10 to 30% is pretty good. And again, that just all depends on, you know, how much debt do you have? What do you need to pay down? Do you plan on making big investments like buying land, commercial real estate, or just, you know, regular real estate during that time? All of that is up to you. All right. So further down in this article, it says that Bitcoin bulls say the cryptocurrency can provide protection from inflation as central banks around the world print money to soften the economic blow of the coronavirus crisis. They say that this has led to increased buying of Bitcoin from institutional investors. And we have noticed this actually for quite a while now. I think that there's actually been more institutional buyers than there have been, you know, regular people like you and me. I just want to be careful right now. Again, we're in uncharted territory. And I don't think that you should dive headfirst into anything. Don't do that. Every trade that's made right now should be with extreme caution. I've I've not bought any I haven't bought any Bitcoin in months. I haven't <laughs> I haven't bought any crypto in a in a really long I'm looking for some really low prices before I decide to add to my portfolio. I I don't like where we're at right now. And even though it seems as if crypto might be making its comeback, you know, any day now, it just takes that one bit of news and it it's going to drop like a rock. So right now I'm I'm staying pretty stern and not wanting that, but I will continue to accumulate silver and gold. Um, and there's a, there's a few stocks that have actually been accumulating, but I won't name what those are. So this says that if you think about traditional currency, this is Roush saying this, these currencies are not actually backed by central or by, yeah, by central bank assets. Excuse me, guys. You can't walk into a central bank anymore and change a dollar for so much gold. That's gone. He goes on to say, what is the difference to crypto? The only difference is it's backed by, the only difference is it's backed by a central bank, which is printing so much money, you actually want to avoid its money. Now that's kind of some interesting wording there. It was kind of hard for me to read for some reason, but... You know, to that point, I can agree. I would almost rather put my dollar in anything, anything right now, rather than just hold it in dollars. Uh, that scares the mess out of me right now, actually. It says, however, other market players see Bitcoin as a speculative bubble that's waiting to burst. Stefan Isaacs, chairman of the investment committee at Financial Consultants, Alvin Capital, that's a mouthful, told CNBC in April he thinks the Bitcoin bubble will end, and when it ends, it will be ugly because there will be nothing there. See, now this is where I want to be really careful because I, you know, the next five to 10 years, I still think that there's a good possibility that Bitcoin has a place in this world. I think that it will be a high value asset. Now, I don't know the future. This is why I think that you should put so little into crypto. I mean, if it goes off, it's going to go off big time. You don't need that much in there. Uh, we want to stay diversified, right? Um, but I don't think we're going to zero necessarily. I don't. Even with all the regulation that's coming in, the more regulation, honestly, I hate regulation, but the better it is for this crypto because the big, I'm talking about the giant institutional buyers, the big hedge funds that are out there, they will be more comfortable in this asset. And I also think that they're going to make it much easier for, I don't just want to say older 
people, but I think that they're going to be making it much easier for people that don't want to hold their own crypto. Now, a lot of us are totally against that. I mean, I, I do think that you should at least have it in a uh, cold wallet or just not keeping it on an exchange, but that can be a little bit much for certain generations, right? The older generations that are out there. And I've got a feeling that they're probably going to make it much easier to pick up these cryptos. I mean, we're already seeing the ETFs that are out there. So that's one step closer. Now we're just going to find out which platform comes out and will hold those cryptos for you. I don't, I don't think that people will even have the option. You know, what I'm talking about here is I don't think that they'll have the option to even send their Bitcoin to a new wallet. I think that whatever platform that they buy it off of, the platform just hopefully actually holds the crypto. Who knows? Could be the same thing as SLV, right? All right. So I think that that's all that I have for you today. Um, let's see here. Later today, I'm actually doing the podcast with my good friend Tony over at Wise Wolf Gold and Silver Exchange. They are the sponsor of, you know, kind of what we have going on here on the channel. Um, but I'm kind of excited for today. I mean, I'm going to speak a little bit again on the David Roush, just a little bit. But we're also going to be discussing Basel III. I want to discuss political developments in Peru, and some of you might be asking, like, why Why does that matter? Like, Kinsey, what does Peru matter to me? Uh, well, it is the second largest silver producer, <laughs> and it also holds the largest silver reserves. So I'm kind of going to want to talk about that because kind of, you know, if their country's going through some kind of crisis right now, that could really hurt what happens, or not hurt, but help what happens with silver. I mean, if they're not producing it, they're not mining it, then uh, we got a problem, right? And I'll probably also be discussing uh, the FBI seizing the Bitcoin from colonial pipeline hackers. So kind of like a, a full table of topics today. I think it's going to be really fun. Just be sure to go and check it out and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys. I do it once, I do it again.